I'm, I'm going to introduce, uh, well, let's, say, let's first introduce Small Sister. Small Sister is a very small group of mainly Dutch citizens that know a bit about computers and they are a bit concerned about what happens to privacy, especially where uh, computers are involved. We, the, the main thing we, we like to do is provide information on computer and online privacy so that people uh, know how, the, how they can involuntarily endanger their privacy and how they can avoid things. Uh, we, we like to educate people about the value of encryption, uh, le uh, learn them that there are tools available that, prof are f that provide them uh, very good privacy and uh, we also inform politicians about what the effects are about of their measures. Right? We're not only uh, aiming at, at other people, but also trying to do some politics and getting those in. Well, as a last part, we are giving information about privacy solutions, but we find that there are some holes in what's available. There are very good tools available, and we don't feel like uh, reinventing another wheel, but there may be holes that, that, that need to be patching, and we like to do that too. And what I'm doing, I'm just here as a developer talking about my project that I think is very interesting. Uh, the tool, it's the first tool that uh, Small Sister is, is making uh, as tool is Small Mail. Uh, Email is, the current standard email is bad for privacy. And even if you use a good tool as PGP, it still remains bad for privacy because uh, as you look at the data retention directive, uh, yeah, your provider can read, knows where you, you send the mail and the governments ask them either to keep it or directly send them a carbon copy, copy of John sent a message to, P to Alice at that time, sometimes even how many bytes. And what's the tool? Well, we want to protect uh, the ordinary citizens. Uh, well, a lot of people already have good tools for privacy. Uh, think the government itself, the intelligence agencies. And another thing is we would like to point out and show how fatally flawed the concept is of data retention. Like, we take all people and collect all information about all their uh, communications and, well, I don't think it will become safer, but uh, they, they collect a lot of data and you, I think on the wrong things. What are, uh, what is small mail doing? Well, we don't really, look at anonymizing the, the people that are communicating with each other. Well, the, the people can communicate anonymously or just only using a handle. Yeah, you, need, you need a kind of email address to get an email to someone, but we are looking more at privacy issues. We like to have, well, the communication secrets from third parties. Well, the government should not know I'm talking with someone in private. We want all, I want to also be able to email in private without the government having a record of every email I sent. And to achieve that, we also like to hide that communication is happening as far as possible. Uh, the moment you uh, do some things on the internet, there will be data on your internet uplink, but it doesn't have to be TCP data that goes directly to your final destination. There are some uh, very good tools that can hide where your uh, data is going to. Tor is a very good, good tool for that, and I will use it. And the thing is, keep it simple. Don't reinvent wheels, just, to, just add to a great body of privacy code that already is there and use it when, need, when needed. Yeah, we want email. That's a client-server protocol. But small mail is 
because of privacy is very, very different from SMTP. Uh, one thing is, well, we don't just encrypt the body of the, 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 the message, we also encrypt the header. Which means that the server operator only sees someone knocking on his door, can you dump this message in the mailbox for pers that person? The server operator doesn't know what the handle is of the, the one who sends the email. Uh, yeah, well, of course, if you want to get your email from a server, you have to identify to the server, but that's the only one. But the server operator doesn't see the content of the email because it's encrypted. It also doesn't see, uh, and it, so it, it doesn't know who sent you the email. It, it's anonymous to the server. You can even create your accounts on the server anonymously, if the server operator allows it. And the server is simple. Uh, it's a simple script that any, anybody can run on his own computer and, well, handle a server. It's, it can be distributed. The server can be in a totally different country, so it's hard for the authorities to find out what it is. We, to achieve a privacy between the, the one that sends the sender of the email and the server operator, we use the hidden service from Tor. Tor is a program I recommend, but mo most of you can use it, you will use it as a web proxy, an anonymizing web proxy. The normal operation is that you send a, a web request into Tor, and in the end, it will move it to, through its network to a server, and uh, you get a web page back. Uh, yeah, it's a good, uh, very good use, and I recommend everybody to install it, try it out, use it when needed. But we use a, a different feature in Tor, we, the hidden servers. We have a server, and our proxy, Tor proxy, is specially configured to know about that it, it can receive some uh, information. What happens, this, this server points a computer in a network, that, of the network with actual interaction point, point. Well, all of it, it goes through, and all of those computers can be in totally different continents. They will be in a proxy network handling data, so it's not entirely clear that the byte that goes over this link also goes over that link. You hide a lot of uh, your, your data transfer. And when a client wants to make a connection, mm -mm, it's a bit, uh, it connects, oh, wrong button. Uh, it connects uh, through the, in, so the client proxy connects through the introduction point, which connects back to the, to the server proxy and to the server. It goes through several hops. The, the, the hops are ch chosen randomly, and they will make it very hard for any attacker to trace how, how your data goes. But yeah, what happens when you start anonymizing or privatizing your email? It shows that some of the email habits are very, very, very bad. We send our confidential documents in plain text through our, to, to, to our ISP, to another ISP, uh, Gmail that indexes it. Uh, yeah, well, uh, we have to change a few habits to make private email. Uh, encry use encryption. That means we have to do key management. You cannot just send an email to a uh, small mail user. You need to have uh, his, his, pri his public key so you can encrypt your email and he can decrypt it again. We, we, made, we made a simple fee card with a with, with with uh, small mail address and the private key so it's relatively easy to uh, exchange but it's still something that is different. And yeah, there are some issues with message lists, yeah, message listings. Well, 
the server hides the, the time that it received the message from the, 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 the person that receives, the client that, re that downloads the message. So the client, well, it, it helps to do, remove traffic errors, but yeah, it makes that sent, message sent times are not there. The, the subtext of the message is encrypted, so we need to de decrypt the message before we can just put a subject line in the header. It's a bit different. One thing that is open is, well, well if you do a CC, you usually see, well, I send this message to the destination, my, my, my boss, his secretary, the secretary of the, de of, of the receiver, etc., etc. Do you want that in every email? Do you want to restrict that? Uh, well, I don't want to have a CC list of all customers that received the, uh, the promotional effort. That's something, yeah, why do things differently? Yeah. I'm getting to my closing words. Yes. First, I'd like to thank Enelmet for subsidizing me to have full-time time on writing it. Try the software. I'll put uh, URLs on the last uh, slide. Improve it, improve documentation, uh, make translations. We already have a Dutch translation ready and the English version. Uh, I'm sure there are some French speaking people around here and German speaking people that could do it. Uh, help to keep the world, world a safe and sane place. Inform everybody around you about the dangers of computers when it goes com respect, respect to your privacy. And if you do have some server space to spare, we could use a few more servers to grow the network. And I planned some time for questions, so it's, there is four minutes left for questions. Anyone have a question here? Questions? Anyone? Yeah? Uh, it's, let's say it, it does, well, someone, someone compared it with IMAP, but it, it has a message push command, and uh, it can pull messages and index messages. It's, uh, it doesn't do anything like uh, message forwarding, because, well, wh uh, how do you send a message failure when you want to, when the server doesn't, you, you don't want the server to know, but, but uh, in Tor, all the servers are, are connected on the internet. So it's forwarding is not necessary anymore. That was in UECP days a requirement, but nowadays it's, well, everybody is connected to everyone. So it's, yeah. I kept it out to make the protocol simpler. Yeah? What's the weird trick that the bottom of this file? That's my, uh, let's say, that's my official, uh, Small mail address. It's. Uh, I can explain it. This is a, the, the user ID that derives from my pub, from a public key. Uh, this is uh, the host name uh, generated from uh, the, the, by the troll proxy from uh, encrypt decryption keys, and the .onion is the top level domain that Tor uses for hidden services. Okay, yeah? Um, how can I remember an address like that? <laughs> I mean, if I uh, uh, write it down somewhere, it yeah. means that uh, in case, I don't know. Uh, uh, well, I've, th there's an address book, there's an address, address book in the client that works nicely. So it's, and in the, it, I'm just programming on, you can just say uh, Peter, associating Peter in your client with this address. So you need very big business cards, though. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, haven't, you haven't seen the public key, the fee card, yes, it's with a public, with a PGP public key. <laughs> okay. Yeah? Is it uh, suspectable to spam or not? Uh, you can spam if you want, but yeah, how, how should any server know about the difference between uh, the whistleblower or the one that's whistleblowing his own Viagra shop? Mm -hmm. Okay.
One, two. <laughs> Do another question, and but I see this alarm clock will ring soon. Nobody? Okay, thank you. <laughs>